indexing will give you all the power that you've ever wanted to access what you just stored inside a matrix and perform further actions on it. It's important to know that when you create an item in MATLAB, you define this matrix, the way that you can point to each individual item inside of that is called indexing. In this first array one, it contains four elements in a one by four matrix. The first element is the one, the second element is the five, the third element, the seven, and the fourth element, the three. And you can access these variables using a simple call as we see right here. You say the name of the variable that you wanna grab inside of. Here we have array one. And right next to that, you're gonna put parentheses and the item that you want from that array. So here we're specifying we want the second element of array one, which should be five. Let's run this, and there it is. Output's in our window, answer is five. If we want the third element of array one, it gives us seven, because it's in the third place of array one. Now, when you get into bigger matrices, now you've got two dimensions to sort on, right? You have to call out what row and what column you want. And technically we're doing that here, but matrix, or sorry, MATLAB is just smarter than us and it knows that what we want, right? We've only got values along one dimension, so it's not gonna go looking where things don't exist. But we can still specify what we're looking for. If we really wanted to get specific, what we're really calling here is in array one, in the first row, right, this is all one row of values, and we're calling the first row third element in that, which is seven. This is the more explicit version, which gives you the same exact answer. Now, if I went and said row two, third element, well, there is no row two, it'll give an error because the index position is exceeding what the array actually exists as, where right? we're going beyond the bounds. Change that back to one, and we could do one, one, and that would give us just that first element in row one as one. Beautiful. All right, now, it gets more complicated when you've got bigger matrices, only because you have to think about what row and what column you're in. But the call stays the exact same. Let's define matrix one here. And now we want to access the second row third element. So logically, that should be second row third element. It should give us 10. Let's go ahead and run that. And there we go. And this output's still coming from above. Let's get rid of that. There we go, 10. All right, same style we're doing before, but you just have to be more cognizant of where you're trying to grab in your matrix. You can save these values once you call them, or if you want to do something with them, you can save them just the way you'd save a regular number, right? If I wanted to create a number, key num that was five, I would just define that as five and run enter. But now let's say I wanted to find it as the fourth row, second element of matrix one, which would be the fourth row, second element is nine. Let's say I want to define key num as nine. Same, same method, right? Matrix one, parentheses four comma two, just gives me that output of nine, and then nine gets saved to key underscore num. If we run this, we'll see that key num is now nine. If you want to print or access an entire row or column of a matrix, you're going to use the regular colon command here. It's not really a command, it's just a placeholder. And you're gonna do, so this will save the entire first row. And you don't care about the column in this case. The colon just says, grab everything that's there. We're not concerned about it, just take it. So here we're saying that we want the first row, comma, and we go to specify the column, just take whatever's there, as ever many as there are. So this really is filling in for going from one to four across the board, and this will give us the entire first row, any column, all the columns, right? It builds it all in there, and we get this out. Now, same thing if you wanna do this for, if you wanna grab an entire column, you're not gonna care about the row, so you put the, the colon in there, whatever, it's fine, comma, but you do specify that you want that third column. Okay, so first part saying, no biggie about the row. Second part saying, I want that third column. 
and there we see key col gives us that third column, 7, 10, 9, 0. Awesome. Let's say now we want to save a value into an existing array or matrix based off a value in another array or matrix. To do this, you're going to be doing a double index, meaning that you have to specify indices of both what you're saving and where you're grabbing from. We've got two arrays set up here, sales and correct, and we're going to replace the second value, the second element in sales, which is 250, with the third value of correct, which would be 30. So our final sales matrix here, final array, should be 130, 221.95. Let's run this to see. 130, 221, perfect, right? So you can use it on both sides of the equal sign, what I'm trying to show you here. It's not exclusive to one side or the other. You can call indices at any point in your scripts. And it's often most useful when you're doing for loops. Very quickly here, there's a whole video on for loops that goes over all of your for loop needs and indices there. But let's say that we've got this variable cracks, which is defined as a one by four matrix or array. We come and we're going through one through the length of cracks. Well, length cracks is just going to give us four. It's the number of elements in it. And we're creating a variable called new cracks and we're specifying that index i. Okay, i starts at one, so it's going to say new cracks one equals cracks one. Well, cracks one is the first element of cracks. That becomes one plus three. So the first element of new cracks would be four. All right, the loops again. The second, right, i is two now. New cracks, second element of new cracks, we're specifying now, is second element of cracks, which is five, plus three. So what we're doing here is we're just adding three to every single item in the matrix, right? And that'll give us new cracks. If we run this, here we see old cracks, and here we see new cracks with three items added. And that's how you gotta be using indices inside your for loops. More on that in the for loops video. There's also more math on matrices coming up. Stay tuned and keep on coding. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, this is Phil from Phil Parisi Code. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you're getting something out of these. If you are, please throw a like and subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you, keep on coding, and enjoy the week.